NECA has to deal with the devil. This is your look at the Toonie Terror's The Exorcist, Reagan. Bring the fun of Saturday morning cartoons to your horror collection with these adorable little creeps. Pick your favorites or collect them all and make every day Toonie Terror time. Before I go bringing up the things I like about this figure, that was a barf reference. I'm here all day. Before we get a closer look, though, at Toonie Tears Reagan, the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall the figure stands. Bringing up. I'd like to thank, as well, the folks over at NECA Toys that provided the sample of Reagan that we're having a look at in this review. Did you know that Toonie Tears Reagan is available right now in retail stores and online as well? You didn't? Well, she is. The figure stands 4.9 inches in height. We can switch that to centimeters bringing up 12.6 centimeters tall is the Toonie Terror's Exorcist Reagan. Seeing as we just had a look at him, let's bring in the Victor Crowley Toonie Terror's release. That was a great looking figure. And for some other devilishly delicious looking Toonie Terror's, let's bring in the remake Pennywise. And why not? We can bring in Chucky and also Tiffany, just because I don't feel they come nearly enough out to play, which kind of get again a good idea of how great these figures look all together. Again, they're all from different movies. They all have their own distinct, unique looks to them. And yet somehow, somehow NECA pulls this off where they all look like they inhabit the exact same world. So she comes with a couple of accessories and sort of based on what you're seeing here with the alternate head sculpt and the projectile vomit, you can kind of see the direction that this is going to go. It's going to get pretty messy. Before, though, we look at the alternate head sculpt and the projectile puke. Let's get a closer look at the defaulted head sculpt that is currently sitting on the shoulders of Reagan. And for that, I'm obviously going to pick up the figure. Now, obviously, this is a good looking head sculpt, but until you see that other one, I would almost be inclined to probably pick up a second one of these so I can get Reagan in her two different looks. And I'll do a comparison of those two different looks in a second. But looking, though, at that defaulted head sculpt, boy, did that ever turn out nice. Paint is kept minimal, even though there's really a lot of it, especially when you're looking at the puke green incorporated to the nightgown and the robe. But it's still kept generally quite minimal. I mean, even if you look at the gashes there on the sides of her cheek, the forehead, and on the chin, they're not sculpted in there necessarily. They're just painted in place. And again, that works well if you're wanting to picture these characters in some cartoon series. Though while I would maybe justify Victor Crowley possibly making an appearance in an episode of Scooby-Doo, I can't really imagine... Reagan, a possessed child with puke all over her body, actually being in an episode of Scooby-Doo, but I digress. One thing I was sort of iffy and on the fence about was the fact that they used so much gray on the eyeballs and the areas around her eyes. It's not until I actually get this in hand that do I appreciate and see the direction that NECA wanted to go with and why they used as much as they did. It really does lend to the idea of these eyes looking really recessed and dark like craters like she has in the movie. It also works really well when you've got those glaring peepers of yellow staring right back at you. Ooh, it's like she's touching my soul. The eyes are done in a almost pea soup yellow, and the yellow continues its way onto her teeth as well. Gnarly looking teeth. Gnarly. Nice outlining done in black as well, so the teeth stand out, each tooth separate from the one next to it. And going back to the idea of the sculpting, really like the sculpting of the wrinkles and the splits on her lip there as well as the wrinkles that they've added onto her eyebrows. That's a good looking figure. Quickly spinning this around before we talk a little bit about the rest of her body. I like the detailing that they've added to the hair. The hair looks good, not needing extra coloring, not really having to add highlights or lowlights. It's only kept to that simple, simplistic black. And it works really well on the figure. All right, let's talk about her barf. There's a whole lot of it, whole lot. Starts at the top of the collar, works all the way down, about halfway. Two thirds of the way, maybe. There's a whole lot of it, and it's all done in this swampy light green. Try to guess what she was eating. I'm sure you won't guess right. Um, it's nowhere actually on her face. You'll see more of it when we swap the head out. I do like the fact they appreciate the fact that they added so much of it on her nightgown and robe. Talk a little bit about her hands. Um, the hands, I'm not really sure what they're doing specifically. They're sort of clenching themselves. And I guess as the power of Christ compels you, maybe that's the demon sort of holding back and holding her fists, clenching them as tightly as she can. 
This would be great if you could get yourself a small little tiny bed. Just have her perched on the end of the bed, looking right at you. Boy, that looks great. I like the coloring that they use also for the nightgown and the robe, a real nice pastel blue with the ruffles all done here on the white and the collar as well. Quickly looking at her feet. One thing I do have issues with the figure is the sculpting that they did for the feet. Uh, the feet aren't, they don't seem completely flat. Although when you're looking at it, they look like they're flat enough, but the heel almost seems to stick out just a little bit more that when I find I'm putting the figure down, there's a little bit of posability, not really much. We'll talk about that also in a second. But I feel like I don't quite get her completely flat. Don't worry, though. She does have pickles on the undersides of her feet, though. So if you do have yourself a clear neck of display stand, by all means, just put that on the display stand. And at least it will guarantee that the figure is not going to fall over on you. So here's Reagan's alternate head sculpt. You can see there's enough of it that changes. Obviously, this one is opening her mouth, and there's a whole lot of green on the inside. Did she eat just lime popsicles a second ago? No, that's that's probably barf. It's everywhere. It's on her tongue. It's on her teeth. And obviously, it works better when you look at the costuming that they've done for the, the figure. All the green now, you can kind of understand where it's come from. Where on this one, it doesn't seem as much the case. But to swap out the heads, all you have to really do... Grab the top of her head right here. And no, not twist it. I know the devil would just tell you to twist it. But instead, what you're going to do is just pop it off. If it helps a little bit, wiggle it as you're popping and freeing it from the ball joint. There's the ball joint right there. It's not quite clear plastic. It's almost kind of like translucent, slightly translucent clear plastic. But the idea is then you're just going to go ahead and take the alternate head sculpt. Now, I do find there is a little bit of difficulty the first couple of times I've done this. I find it still fits in place, but I probably would recommend if you get this figure for yourself, submerge either the neck in hot water, or you can use also the hairdryer trick. Some people, depending on who you talk to, prefer to use a hairdryer. Other people just like to submerge their head sculpts in water. Usually a lot of times I just take the neck and I just let it sit. I don't put the whole head in because that really doesn't need to be the case. I just only put the bottom of the neck in hot water. I haven't done it yet for this figure. I might actually find myself still doing that because I find like the head is just a little more difficult to get in place, but it's staying there for the time being. All right, let's talk about the barf here. So she does come with projectile vomit. Kind of reminds me the way that they install this into the figure's head. It reminds me of like the Godzilla figures if you pick those ones up. But what it is, is there's a peg right on the end here right on the end. And what it is, is on the inside of the figure, and hopefully you can see it, there's a little hole at the back of her throat. Just take this and fit it into her mouth. Just fit that into her mouth. There you go. And it plugs generally easy enough. If you apply too much pressure, this is softer plastic, and you may find it actually warping on you as you're forcing it in. You don't have to push it in too far, actually, for it to stay in place. And you get this end result. I'll just twist it slightly to make sure it's, there we go, dead center. And obviously you can see now that works better, I feel, for her nightgown. Still though, when you compare the two side to side, you can probably see why I'd want to get another one of these so I can display them in the two different looks. Really like the look of that. Just straighten that out just slightly. If you twist it too much, I find it pops right out. And again, if you force it too far in, the key is just getting it that sweet spot right there. And boy, that's a neat look to the figure. I mean, it look like what oh, it looks like on the underside right there. Again, they kept the coloring really simple on this. Didn't feel the need to add a whole lot of darker grain to it. Just kept it to the same coloring as her teeth, her tongue, and of course the coloring on her nightgown and robe here. Because I feel it would be a little bit more difficult to look at the figure's posability with the puke in her mouth. Oh, that's gross. We're going to just take that off for the time being. For her posability, whatever head you decide to go with, because it is a ball joint, you can move the head back and forth, up and down. And I guess technically, if you want to, you can rotate it all the way around. The hair is soft enough, at least, that you can twist the head all the way around if you want to. Let's just twist that back. That's, I feel, going to anger her. You can move the arms forward and back. Just a straight swivel. You can also rotate the hands back and forth. That's the case on both sides. As for the rest of the figure, let me just tilt it up. It's literally just all molded plastic from the top of her collar to the bottom of her nightgown. They're just all solid plastic. It kind of reminds me of the Toonie Terrors Hellraiser pinhead, which was a very similar design. It was just all encased plastic. But she does have posability also on the bottoms of her feet. 
You can rotate those back and forth. And you can kind of pivot them, but they're only more pegged in place than they're actually ball jointed. That's a good looking figure though. Again, one last time, we'll bring in the alternate head sculpt or the head sculpt we started with before we changed up locations. Again, I really like the design of both of these. And again, I probably find myself maybe picking up a second one of these Reagans simply so I can have her displayed in these two very differently distinct looks. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but if the Toonie Terrors, the Exorcist Reagan is any bit of an indicator that NECA Toys has reacquired the licensing for the Exorcist films. Because keeping in mind, the last time we did get ourselves an official Reagan from NECA was way back in the days of the cult classics. But if this is a prelude, perhaps, to maybe a retro cloth release of Reagan, or even, dare I say, dare I even say, an ultimate version of the Exorcist Reagan, that has me pretty giddy. Of course, again, I don't want to get too ahead of myself. I'm going to just appreciate the fact that we finally get ourselves a Toonie Terrors version of Reagan. While I will admit that she, I don't think, fits as well into the idea of a cartoon. I don't know if I would really want a demonic cartoon girl spewing up vomit all over Mystery Incorporated. But she still does work well with all the other figures that we've been collecting thus far. She does have swappable heads. The puke one that we're looking at here in Final Looks and the way that we started off shop at the beginning of this review was with the defaulted head sculpt. Both the head sculpts are really good on this figure. I'm not really sure which one I like more because the other one is more traditional Reagan. This one is good again if you want to have her just vomiting all over everything. But the option is available for you and obviously a strong contender if you want to get more than one of these. She's a good looking figure. Slightly smaller obviously than maybe some of the other Toonie Terrors that we've looked at in the past. But certainly a nice touch is by incorporating that projectile vomit which plugs into her mouth the exact same way. If you've ever collected the NECA Toys Godzilla figures, plugs into the mouth the exact same way. She has limited posability like all the other Toonie Terror releases. Swiveled arms, swiveled wrists, swiveled legs, and of course the ball-jointed head. I do have some difficulty though when it comes to her feet, especially if you're deciding to put puke in her mouth. Oh, that's, that's really gross. But if you do put the vomit in her mouth, it does cause the figure to lean forward even more. And I find the feet aren't completely flat. So you already have that issue before, but then you, when you add vomit to her mouth, oh, can we just stop with the vomit talk? It does cause the figure to topple forward a little bit. So I would definitely encourage you guys, if you want to pick this one up for yourself, make use of a clear display stand. I just used a black display stand because it looks well with the rest of the turntable, but definitely make use of a, of a display stand to guarantee that Reagan isn't going to fall over on you. I really like the look of this one quite a bit. And hopefully, 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 it, it will mean that we'll get future Reagan figures from NECA Toys. In the meantime, let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of the Exorcist Toonie Terrors Reagan. She's a pretty cool looking figure. I'd like to also thank the folks over at NECA Toys that provided the sample of Reagan that we had a look at in this review. Did you know that Toonie Terrors the Exorcist Reagan is available right now in retail stores and online as well? You didn't? Well, there you go. There's your 411 from this humbled reviewer. Also, let me know down below in the comments section for your video question for today is, what is your favorite Exorcist movie? It doesn't have to necessarily be one that had Reagan. It doesn't even have to be of the original trilogy or that horrible prequel that got rewritten and re-filmed. Not those ones, but just across the board. What's your favorite Exorcist-themed horror movie? Let me know down below in the comments section. Also, if you're new to the channel and you're liking all the content you're seeing, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And of course, yeah, you can move on over to that very dark... Why is that side of the room all covered in dark mist? Well, over there, you'll also find the bell notification. Make sure you turn that on to tell YouTube that you want to get those friendly notifications every single time a new video posts up. And also, just an FYI, Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you'll find new videos popping up on this channel. I can also send you a, a friendly little demonic whisper into your ear that there are more Toonie Terror reviews coming soon to this channel. So keep your papers peeled and don't vomit all over everybody. Don't vomit all over everybody, by the way, guys. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.